Good evening. Good evening. I'm Scotty Henley, and welcome to the Clayton Center. Thanks. I have had the uh, I've had the pleasure and the honor of saying those words several times over the past nine years. Lately, this past year, I have said them quite a few times, with uh, one little caveat. Welcome to your Wednesday night streaming delight. <laughs> cheesy? Yeah, but we're all due for a little cheesy every now and then, aren't we? A little backstory to help you all along. If you're not familiar, this thing called COVID-19 grabbed our nation and kind of has a hold on us right now. And about sometime in January or February of last year, it made its way over to our side of the pond and started raving raging some havoc and holding us up. And this state, along with others, decided that it was best for us all to just shut her down. Maybe for a few weeks, we'd get this all handled out and we'd be back to normal. So you saw a lot of signs like this. Sorry, we're closed due to COVID-19. Well, for us, that meant postponing some events. That wasn't too bad. We just had to take care of some of our rentals, some of our clients, some of the churches and everything. We just stopped, held, held hold, held the calendar for them. That was okay. We, we could manage through that. And to be fair, we were also asked as a cultural arts department to take on the cleaning and disaffecting of this building about three times a day, which we did gracefully. And recently, or for a while now, we've been answering the phones in the afternoons. We've been able to give up the cleaning part, which has been good. But we've continued to answer the phones in the afternoons, and it's given us a bit of a history and a lesson about uh, even furthering our customer service skills. So here we are in March, I think it was March 12th, Broadway decided that it was going to close for just a month, from March 12th to April 12th. Well, it didn't take longer than maybe a week when the Met Opera said, we're not going to open for a full year. We're willing to give up $5.3 million in revenue just to make sure everybody's safe. And it was, the, it was a recommendation by the CDC and many others around that entertainment should shutter itself down because we don't need to have a large group of people together in one place. It would be the easiest way for us to control this. And that included us. Beautiful picture of our stage, but not so beautiful if it's sitting like that for a year. So we had to take the route, like everybody else, and cancel shows. Now, luckily, and I say luckily for us, we only had about two shows that we had to cancel. But we had a lot of rentals, we had a lot of meetings, HOAs, the churches, everything had to stop. We haven't seen them for a year. Being creative people, artists, they decided, well, we'll just grab the cell phones, start doing some live streaming, give you some entertainment. Maybe, maybe earn a few bucks through a tip jar or something in that line. And that was all good. It was kind of a novelty for a week. But then you'd find that they'd have a problem, the Wi-Fi would drop out, the signal wouldn't get there, you couldn't understand the audio. It was starting to lose its flavor. And if you were a big name star, you probably had done pretty well with your life and had saved your money and were able to ride this thing out where other entertainers, other artists from the lowest parts were having to work off the gig economy effect. And that's where you've got to work from day to day to day to get your, to make your bread. I was inspired though, because I wanted to figure out how could we get into the game how we could support our community, how we could support our businesses, mainly our restaurants that were shut down, and how could we stay connected and help artists at the same time. And there was a young lady who played here about three years ago, and unfortunately last year she was gonna be here with David Miles, and her show got canceled, and that was Susan Werner. And she started this thing called Susie on Sundays at seven o'clock. Very crafty, she started off with a phone, and then later on you see that there was a camera now added, and a microphone, and it became very clean. And she inspired me, where I was trying to think, we have a stage, we have lights, the audio thing is gonna be a, a trick. And then the cameras, and this is where the Stacy Beard effect comes in. 
Sorry, Nathan, you're going to hear a lot about her, but don't, don't take it personally. In talking to her and finding out about the cameras, and Nader, who's back there running the, uh, the cameras right now, found out we had all the cameras we needed, but they had something in their possession called a sling studio. I didn't know what a sling studio was, so I started researching it. That's the, ma the main brain there of an encoder that allows us to transmit video to Vimeo, to YouTube, to Facebook Live. But what you don't see on the back side of that machine is inputs, audio input. Ah, I started researching what the connections were, found them, bought them, got Paul Barton to come in, our sound engineer, and we started testing. We found that we could produce quality sound. So now I got stage, I got lights, I got sound. All I need is artist. So now granted, we're still in March here. And I gathered a couple of artists who were in the triangle who are not only just our local artists, but they are national and international artists. And they had tried to do something on their own too, but they were having struggles with the technology. And I convinced them, you should come, come to our stage, we'll take care of the technological parts, you just do what you do best, and that's entertain. Now again, we're in March. What was happening in March? A lot of shotgun information about COVID, what was happening? About three days before this show was gonna happen on the 25th, they started contacting me more regularly, telling me about their, their uncomfortableness. They had families, people that depending on them, they were a little nervous. On the 25th, the day we were supposed to do this, four hours before the show, I'm on a conference call with them on the stage with everybody else that's gonna help, and they finally admit they're not coming. They're just not comfortable. So I'm ready to pack it up, tell everybody it's done, we're finished. And they're like, wait, wait a minute, we, we're, we got everything all set up. Why, can't we do something? I think they wanted me to call you, Mr. Mayor, and have you sing a few medleys. <laughs> Stephen Langston, Justin Dunn said, wait, can you give us 40 minutes, an hour? Let, us, let me call somebody, anybody that's local artists. And they started throwing out names, and one of them was Aaron Ham. I said, well, I've got Aaron's number, call him up so you can do. I don't know what they said to Aaron, but Aaron agreed. And him and his partner, Josh Adams, came here with 40 minutes to be able to sound check and sit down on these stools with these cameras in front of their face and like five people in the audience and did their first live stream, live stream with us. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't even know if we were live at first. We pull up our phones, we didn't see anything, and all of a sudden it's there and we found out, oh yeah, there's lag because it's broadcasting. We're not live live, we're, we are live, but we're, we got a lag to deal with. And my hope was that we'd only be doing maybe four or five of these things and we'd be going back to our normal lives, as people have been saying. And so we kind of joked and, and weren't really joking. We said, well, we're going to have the artists we have here and we'll get everybody together and we'll have this great reunion type concert on the stage. Well, week four went to week eight, week eight went to 10, then we went to 15, then we went to 22, and it looked like we're not getting anywhere at all. But we were getting better at it. Our audio was getting better, our lights were getting better, our video was getting better because Nader was back there schooling us on how to be better photographers. Then we got the attention of the North Carolina Arts Council, and they said, we want to contract you to give you a bit of money that you will hire our artists from our cartwheel program, and you can either stream them or record. And I also convinced them to let us use some of that money to get some of our own artists. That's how we got the Malpas brothers, John Brown, uh, Shauna Tucker, Christian Tambor here. And we were successful and we fulfilled our agreement with them. Now, one of the toughest areas and one of the longest now relationships we have had personally here is with this man right here, Mike Wiley. He is a playwright, actor, social activist, mainly historian on civil rights issues, stories. I invited him to come do a performance here, and he said no. He was concerned that his property, his intellect, his performance would not be his anymore. But I heard that he wanted and was trying to build a studio in his garage, green screen, everything else, going to try to do these things himself. And I talked to his agent, which we all know, Stephen Barefoot. And I said, Stephen, I got an idea. We've got some money from the Arts Council. 
have Mike come down here and just see something. So he came on a Wednesday, him and another partner, and I think they were totally blown away with what we had in there. We turned this place into a studio. He did not, he was not prepared for that. So he agreed that we would come and do one recording of one of his shows, the Jackie Robinson, to start off. And I think from that moment that he came and did that, we did like four hours of work for him, recording with about seven different cameras. I think, well, I know, he was impressed by not only the time we gave him and the care that we gave him and how we were committed to his craft and what he was trying to put out there, that he then said, I want to do the rest of my shows here. So we recorded all eight of his performances here. And at this time period, he would be in all of your schools, your primary schools, your colleges, some conferences, performing these pieces as historical documentation to help teach. He was wiped out from that. So midway in the fourth recording of one of his shows, we've stopped, we're finished, I'm on the floor, he's up on the stage, and he comes and goes, hey, I got this thing going on in Asheville with the North Carolina Stage Company. I got to do 12 performances of Blood Don't Sign My Name. Can we do them here? And they do them on Zoom. And me being me, and not thinking at that moment, went, yeah, sure, we can do it. Mike turned on his heels, walked away. He goes, I'll talk to Charlie Flynn McKeever, who is the artistic director there, and we'll see how we can set this up. And then I went, how do I do this? Because this thing doesn't talk to Zoom. Did some more research online, found out, hey, you just buy a couple of implements, it'll work. You hook your computer up from that implement to the Sling Studio, you've got Zoom. No. It did give us the video but it didn't give us the audio quality. It was behind. So in other words, if I clapped right now, my hands would hit together, but then the sound would come after it. We worked and worked and got it closer and closer, and even when testing with the North Carolina Stage Company, it was there, but it wasn't quite there. Again, utilizing resources. I found Ethan McKenzie who had been working with us. Young man, studied uh, sound engineering, digital, very smart. I said, Ethan, please come help me. Get me through this. He gave me two days, and we worked and worked and worked until we found the right audio implement that we needed to be able to take the sound and move it forward, and then go to our board and bring it backwards till we matched up. We passed the test with the Arts Council, or with the North Carolina Stage Company. But here was the other kicker. Charlie Flynn, being an artistic director, being artsy, said, I want the audience that's gonna see this in Zoom feel as close as they are as being in your theater. I need Mike to see them. And everybody thought I was nuts by trying to do this. But then again, it was fun because I was relying on my technical knowledge from college. And we came up with this. So what you have is three screens. The middle one is lower because he uses projections. Zoom allows you 47 heads across its screen. So we have three computers. In the house, we have three projectors. I've got our pipe and drape up, some simple drapes, white. I'm shining the image on that screen in a reverse projection so Mike can see the audience. In the audience seating, I have speakers so that Mike, during his time of interacting with the audience, can hear them. And at the end, they had Q&A. They could have their conversation, ask their questions. We did all 12 of their shows in three weeks, and Mike never had to go to Asheville, and never had to come home in quarantine, and never had to put his family in danger, and never had to have them worry. And that was important because they were also trusting in us that we were gonna take their safety to heart. Subsequently, we have done other presentations for Mike through Raleigh Little Theater, uh, Western Piedmont Community College. Uh, we will do one for the League of Municipalities here at the end of uh, April. And we have one more before that. I'm afraid I'm forgetting which one. The Benson Area Chamber of Commerce contacted us because they were worried about losing the money for two of their outdoor concerts. We were able to produce those for them. And Elon and uh, App State were recordings that we did for Shauna Tucker as they presented them for them, for their, their audiences, um, based on the contract obligation she had. Elon just happened a week and a half ago, and last week I was on a Zoom 
conference with other presenters that we do a, a bi-weekly kind of thing to make sure everybody's okay and what they're doing. And in the middle of it, Jeff Clark, who operates an organization, stopped everything to compliment me on what the production looked like and the value that he got, which meant a lot to me uh, because <laughs> Jeff toured with, the, toured with the Eagles many years ago. So he knows what's going on, what has to happen. So it is to the best of my knowledge, and it's been told, that we were the only theater in North Carolina that was doing a weekly live stream presentation. I say that sort of in boasting, but at the same time I say it as a proud parent. And more importantly, I, I bring forward to you is, I never asked you if I could do this, but you never stopped me. And Mr. Mayor, at one point in May, you had made a comment about what we were doing. And your comment was, I hope that those artists are being paid, which to me, gave me the thumbs up, and two, I went back retroactively and paid those artists, and we paid everybody beforehand. Not a tremendous amount, but I think a fair amount, so that they don't have to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all the time. I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but I'd like a variation as well. But more importantly, you enabled me to keep my work family together. Many of my contemporaries cannot say that. And now that we're in a spot where we look like we may be coming through this, they're trying to rebuild where I'm one step ahead there and I don't have to retrain and I've get, I get to keep the great people that I have. So I thank you so much for that and so much for the administration for allowing us to do this. And I am sure, no, I'm positive. In fact, if you just give me four more minutes of your time, there's some people that would like to tell you what they appreciate about being here. Thank you, one, for allowing us to do this. And I think I speak for all the guys in my band when and I say it meant the world. You know, Clayton's home has been for me forever. When the a working band isn't working, you know, it kind of puts a damper on things. And, and uh, y'all reached out and we were able to line something up and, and get up here and put on a show, not only for Clayton and everybody that wasn't able to mingle and get together like we had been for years, but for people abroad. Being able to come out here and see the interaction of our fans and the support of our town, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been real humbling and, and a great experience. We were so excited about just being able to come in the doors at the Clayton Center. It was a rainy night, it was cold, but everybody was just delightful and the staff and everything about the Clayton Center was perfect. I definitely am just so grateful to be standing on a real stage and feeling like I'm doing what I love to do, which is perform my songs for everyone and to sing for people. And you might not be here in physical form, but I can see your comments and I really appreciate your support. Thank you guys so much. If it wasn't for those of you watching, um, I don't know where my music career would be right now because you guys have been supporting me for so many years. I've had the opportunity in the last several months to be here at the Clayton Center presenting and performing my work in ways that I've never done before. Simply stated, I've had the opportunity in the last several months to reach more audiences than I've ever reached before. The fact that we have some place like here, especially this beautiful stage that we can use as artists and especially as full band, um, it means a lot to us right now. Those opportunities just aren't there. Our community is looking forward to these things on Wednesdays. For me, myself, I mean, my family's up in New York and they can't see me live, especially right now. Um, traveling is just not an option. Clayton is special, I say it all the time. I'm not from here, I've been a lot of places. Clayton is different. There's something very, very, very special about Clayton. About two weeks ago last year, I went from a whole year's worth of performances lined up, including international, to everything rescheduled until further notice. And um, even now, my heart just did a little cartwheel, uh, not in a good way, just remembering that, that reality. The most consistent ways that I could continue showing up at the level of artistry and professionalism and quality 
that I wanted to maintain even throughout the pandemic um, was here on this stage. We filmed our first pre-recorded performance in June. I have beautiful footage from this stage that I can use for years to come. It looks good, it sounds good, it feels good, and it's because the Clayton Center said yes to me being able to come and pre-record a show, present that show for universities, for performing arts centers, to be able to continue to show up as Shauna Tucker, Chamber Soul, Cello and Songs, and, and continue to work at a level um, and a way that is sustainable for my artistry, for my business, and for my family. I'm just thankful. I thank you for, for, for helping me to continue being, being great. <laughs> you have to love her laugh at the end. Mm -hmm. She's a beautiful person. And uh, that day was the day that we recorded the concert for Elon. Thank you all very much for listening. Thanks for the opportunity. And thanks for the opportunity to do what we've been doing. You did great work, man. I think you deserve a round of applause. And, and let me say this too, while I'm sitting up here experiencing all this, you know, innovative, as featuring new methods, advanced and original. And that's really what you and our staff at the Clayton Center have done, you know? So if we gave away an award tonight for best innovative, it would have to go to you and your team because that's what you're doing. You're taking what you have and you're making something of it. And in all of this, for me, to, to realize that we have basically a production facility that, we, that the citizens of Clayton could be increasing some revenue from that that we never even thought that we could. So the future is bright when we get to open up and be back in person, enjoying all the performances at the Clayton Center. In addition to being able to help all the artists that want to be able to get what they do out there. So it's awesome. Excellent job. Well, I appreciate that and thank you very much. And yes, it is our team that did this together. And the, the one thing when I did fail to mention with Mike when he was so taken by us having four hours and they're with him, we were just happy to be in there doing something in our place. Yeah. Playhouse not played in is not fun. Mr. Holder. I feel like when I, when I heard you were going to start live streaming, when the pandemic hit, hit and the whole world shut down, there was a big need created for people to be entertained, for people to be able to enjoy music and relax. And I feel like you feel that need. Well, I appreciate that, and I hope that that hour that the people did spend with us, they spent it without having to think about the numbers or the news or anything like that. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Awesome. Mr. Grannis? Scotty, I think your creativity is, is just beyond uh, anything that we could think of. And not only you, but your entire staff. And I know indirectly, I will say, you have absolutely made a difference in those people's lives. And I also think you have made a, a difference in your team's lives as well. And you're to be commended for that. Your creativity is totally beyond reproach. Well, again, I appreciate those kind words, but those individuals and this team made a difference in my life. Awesome. Thank Anyone you. else? I just say the best is still to come, right, Scotty? There you go. Scotty wanted to get on stage. Well, he wanted to do his presentation. We're trying to pick the right time. He said, I got to do it this night because this is one year of live streams. I don't know if y'all caught that, but he's been doing this for a year or the team has. Correct. And we, and we will was, have um, Aaron Ham celebrating that on the last Wednesday of this month. Awesome. So I've challenged Scotty. He's kept his team together. He's been creative. We're going about to come out of this thing. And so I do think the best is yet to come because I think... We're in, a, we're in a great position as Clayton for our citizens to do something really special and to be on top of things. And Scotty's helping out in different ways and looking to be extra creative as we even come further out. So 
I thank you a lot, Scotty. I've tried to support you the best I can since I've been here. Um, you have. Thank you. I've been there in a lot of backstages with you. So Yes, you um, have. I, I do support everything you're doing. So I, I'm, just, I'm happy it's worked out well for your whole team. I really am. I am too. And thank you all again for your support. Thanks very Scotty. much.